I want to catch up with Paddy Crumlin, who's the National Secretary of the Maritime Workers' Union. There's a blue going on between the, the wharfies and the federal governments. And they say that the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, has been spreading porky pies. G'day, Paddy. How are you? Not bad, Marcus. Marcus, I used to get anxious at school. Having yep. a go every day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, mate. We just need to toughen up, I think. And, uh, and... I, I know, mate. Yeah, it's a complex world, isn't it? Well, Always someone else is to blame, isn't it? Mm, and I think we make it far too complex. You know? Yeah, that's it, mate. All right, tell me what's going on. You say the Prime Minister has, in a calculated way, launched a political attack Time to cause maximum anxiety, there's that word again, and fear within the community, based on a lie. What's this all about, Paddy? Well, that's what he does habitually. I mean, everyone knows that. <laughs> He's notorious for it, you know. The, uh... So what you look look for if you're a politician and you're in the strike he's in, everybody's, you know, everybody's taken off around him. He's got problems with women there. They've got a bad culture. You've got to look around for to distract everyone. So oh, yes. No, nothing better than give a wharfie your belt, you know. So, uh, But, you know, that's an old cliche. Wharfies these days are young women and men with families. You know, they go to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They've got families, you know. They, they're decent, good, hard-working people. So he's, he's, gone, <laughs> he's gone after the, uh, you know the wrong area and basically we're not doing anything we're turning up the work two years ago our agreement expired the employers now this is a scoop the employers went down to see mr porter a fine bottle of moral caliber that bloke and said look the start of covid you've got to watch these wharfies they'll hold the country to ransom we have to enter we have to go into an essential services and take away their bargaining rights and even porter threw them out of the joint and so for the last two years they've been stalling and you know using the um, the current circumstances of COVID to their own advantage two billion dollars that company made last year they got 336 million dollars out of job seeker yeah. none of it went to anyone they paid themselves millions in uh in in payments and and extras you know bonuses and, yeah, yeah, this is what they're bonuses, mm. and we embarrassed them, blew the whistle on them, and they had to give the thirty-six million. This is not a very good company, Marcus. You know, mm. and then so what do they do? They turn. Around. We had to argue with them to get face masks when COVID came out. We said we're in the front line of COVID, the front line every day. You know, you got this COVID stack ships coming in. Can we have masks? Oh no. Mass, mass unscientific. There's nothing in it. They never want to pay for a paper mask, mate. And so all they've done is use the last couple of years to gouge. You know, you wouldn't want to be in a lifeboat with them, Marcus. All right. When the sea biscuits run out, you know mm. what would happen? You wake up. You wake up in the morning with tooth marks all over your thigh, mate. <laughs> so Stevedore and companies basically are refusing to negotiate with the Maritime Workers Union. Uh, you've been locked out of negotiations for how long now? couple of years two, two years two years about nothing um, we've, we've got a settlement we know our responsibilities we're family we want to have christmas too mm. we're just ordinary working men and women you know down on the waterfront young people i mean to to vilify imagine marcus if you work for someone who vilified you told lies about you organized behind you it wouldn't be much of a workplace and the one thing when you're negotiating with them you go into the negotiations with a bit of resentment yeah. when you've been lied about in the media. I mean, it, like you said, it just adds to the anxiety and the pressure we're all under, Marcus, you know, and uh, and these guys don't give a rat. That's the problem. All right, so with the stevedoring companies um, not allowing further negotiations, you say, um, along with international shipping lines... Um, the Prime Minister has joined in on this spin, disguising and misrepresenting the fact um, that they are reaping some of the highest profit margins in their history. And to protect these profits, they've been prepared to attack and vilify the workers and their families who turn up every day to unload ships. Uh, now, the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, has joined in on this attack on working people. You say it's a disgrace and reflects the fact that his government will never represent working women and men 
and will always suck up to biz, big business, wealth, and international corporate elitism. <laughs> Them fighting words, <laughs> Paddy. Ah, oh, well, it's true, mate. Me, I never went out there. He went out there. I mean, he, he wants to pick a fight with everybody, you know, and uh, he wants to pick a fight with China. He wants to pick a fight with France, you know. He hasn't got it. You're not going to have his submarines for 30 years, you know. So periscope up. Where's an enemy? Oh, there's the wharfies over there. Let's torpedo them. Mm. Mate, what are we, what are we, how do we protect ourselves? It's like Trump. You, you, you repeat a, a falsity, fake news over and over and over again, and it becomes the truth. Everybody's out there under tremendous stress and anxiety. You said it, mate, you know? Yeah. And, and they're going to say that they're looking around to blame people. The anti-vaxxers are blaming the vaxxers. The vaxxers are blaming the anti-vaxxers, you know, with the teachers <laughs> and the schools. So, yeah. oh, pick on a wolfie. You know, the, uh, and I'm mate, you know, it's not, he's, this is a sign of a desperate, desperate government. But they're picking on the wrong people. Where Those ships, those ship owners yeah. have used COVID to gouge out of the carcass of the Australian economy. It used to be $2,000 to bring a container into this joint. Now it's $10,000. Yep. They're have making look massive... Yeah. Musk have made billions of dollars, a big Danish company. Mm. Uh, their ships are full of COVID. Their seafarers can't get off. They don't pay any tax. It's wage slavery, and they're making this money. And so we're the villains that turn up every day and pay our taxes and... And, and, well, the employers jump on board because yeah. it's in their self-interest mm. as well. They're gouging profit as well. Mate, I'm not one, the one put... I didn't pick on Morrison. He picked on us. And all we're doing is telling the truth, mate. That's all, like you said. Right. Well, I mean... Power to the truth, Marcus. We have some of the lowest rates of industrial disputation worldwide and our productivity consistently operates at or above global benchmarks as indicated by the federal government's waterline reports. At a recent meeting organised by the Department of Home Affairs, stevedoring shipping and logistics companies met with departmental officials to analyse the ACCC's container stevedoring monitoring report. The emerging consensus at this meeting was that business had never been better, a position which seemingly took the department by surprise, despite the ACCC's report outlining that shipping volumes increased by 20% in the second half of 2020 and are up 8% against pre-COVID baseline set in 2019. So everything's hunky-dory, so why won't the government now come to the table and negotiate? They're in, poli they're in political trouble, mate, and they've got All to right. blame someone. You know what Biden did? <laughs> President Biden, he went down to the... Every, this is happening all over the world, the congestion, you know, the failure of supply chains, you know, the fact that the employers aren't investing in their own uh, workplace, you know. So we're doing our bit. All the figures say we're doing... You know, Biden went down to meet with the Wolfies in LA and, and uh, New Jersey and thanked them for keeping the economy down. That's a difference. Morrison, who's never been there. You know, Morrison did halfway through. He's done it before. He said, we'll send the army this 12 months ago. And we weren't taking hardly any action. They're like little pinpricks to keep the employers awake and focused. You know, that's mm -hmm. all industrial action is, small amounts to get them back to the table. He said, I'll send the army down there. I'll get those wolfies, send the army. Oh, dear. And I said to him, the army, mate, he said, there are 40 ships sitting off Botany Bay. And I said, the Army? You don't send the, want to send the Army, you want to send the Navy. He said, why the Navy? I said, to find those 40 ships. The Phantom <laughs> Fleet, Mr Morrison's fair. He should have got in his budgie smugglers, gone down to Wanda, you know, and had a look out to see. There's nothing there, mate. I mean, this guy's a serial liar. I mean, right. I, I, don't, I hate calling it, but he's come after us for no good reason and he thinks that there's a few votes in it, Marcus. And I really appreciate you reaching out, you know, to the truth, mate. But because, you know, it's like we're nothing. Working Australians, you know, they're in the front line in COVID every day. Our guys get COVID. I mean, I, Apparently, I don't know how to you, you describe have too it much... to you. Imagine the frustration yeah. of those 
those workers down there, Marcus. But you have your union, apparently, according to uh, the the federal government, you have way too much power. I mean, Scott Morrison has threatened to intervene and break the industrial gridlock in the nation's ports unless the Maritime Union of Australia and Patrick Terminals negotiate a resolution to their month lot, months long dispute, uh, declaring the efficient operation of ports critical to the economic recovery. Scott Morrison has also flagged longer term substantive legislation change or legislation change to break the power of the MUA. Bash a worker to cover your own mistakes. Too much power. The ACCC in the Trades Practices Act allow these ship owners with their wage slavery and tax avoidance to enter into cartels, monopolies. No one else can do it in Australia, but these guys can. And that they've taken a container from 2,000 to 10,000, making billions and billions of dollars. You know? Who's got too much power, Marcus? All right. Employers, you know, that can just gouge out of the economy. Patrick's, you know, that have gone, increased their profits to 20%, 2 billion. Got, you know, got JobKeeper and didn't want to give it back. Who's got too much power, Marcus? Honestly, I'm just a worker, mate, you know. I, we're just doing our best to tell the truth. And when you're up against big power and monotonous lies and the media just going... We're a, we're a community, like you said, that, that want to get on with it. We don't we don't want disunity. We won't do our job, mate. Yep. That well we don't said. take industrial action. We only do it in desperation. I, I don't know. How do you repeat? It's like Trump. How do you get your truth across in the face of a this stonewalling of lies and misinformation? It's hard. All right. Anyway. Paddy, it's always uh, good to chat to you. Uh, I love the way you, you, know, you call a, a bloody shovel a spade. It's great stuff. <laughs> Good on you, Marcus. You're keeping the joint honest. That's all you can do, mate. We'll talk soon. Thank you. More, po- more power to you, Marcus. Good on you, mate. See ya. Bye-bye. Well, he's a character, and I love the passion. I really do. Paddy Crumlin, National Secretary, Maritime Workers' Union.